All right, so we're preparing for a little test on applications problems. It's got three major kinds, one of which is expected value, and so they have the warranty type questions. You have to be good at figuring them out. I think they're actually pretty practical because in the real world, you actually are offered warranties all the time. They got so popular at like Best Buy and stuff that now when you go into Office Max and you buy a pencil, they're like, there's a warranty on this available for only $4.99. I mean, seriously, they offer warranties on everything. So, let's see if this one's a good deal. You decide to invest in a TI Inspire that costs 125 bucks. That's actually the real price of these things. Nine out of every 100 TI Inspires goes bad in the first year. Now that's totally made up. Probably isn't that high a percentage. Not many companies would survive if 10% of their calculators died in the first year. And the store offers a one year warranty plan on the calculator for 15 bucks. Also a little high. If I, in my opinion, the warranty price on this would probably be more like eight bucks. And then the actual number of them that break would probably be more like only 3% break. But it is what it is. Uh, What's your expected value and should you purchase it? All right, so first of all, you gotta make one of these. Works, breaks. And then you want the probability times the amount and then we're going to add them all up. Would you please fill, figure this out, fill it out, use your calculator. You're gonna need one anyway. If you haven't got a graphing calculator, go get one, they're on my desk. So I hope you started with the work probability, which is pretty high because only nine of them break. So that means 81 of them out of 100 of them work and nine out of a hundred of them break. I meant 91. I said 81, but I meant 91. Okay, and then amount. The amount I get if it works is nothing. You don't go back in with a working calculator and say, give me my money. But you do go back into the break and broken calculator and you, uh, you might say that. And it might be nicer to say, I'd like to exercise my option on this warranty. When I times by zero, I get zero. When I times by that one, I get the big important answer, which came out to, yes? 11 and a quarter. So then if I add them together, I get 11 and a quarter. Is that the expected value? Not really, because now I have to factor in how much does this thing actually cost? That's what a warranty be worth. Do you have something, a question? Or? Yes, that's what we're about to factor in. I don't like to put that. Some people put in negative 15 here, and then they subtract 15 there, but you know what? They've got to do it twice. And they've got to have a number here, which means they have to actually subtract something. So I think that's a really slow way to do it. I like to factor in the $15 at the very end. So now I'm going to subtract off the $15 that I paid for it, and I will realize that I have a negative expected value. And that negative expected value is negative, was $3.75. Now that means my expected value, if I buy the warranties, I will expect to lose on average, that's what expected values are, three seventy-five. And what does that mean about the store? They're gonna make three seventy-five. All right. All right. So that's why they sell it, because realistically, uh, that's a lot of times the same amount of profit margin they would have on like a calculator. They might only make three bucks on selling the calculator to you in the first place. If they can make another three bucks by selling you the warranty, they just doubled their profit. That's why they sell them. All right. I think you guys are good at those. Raise your hand if you feel comfortable with that kind. All right, that's the kind we spent a whole week on earlier in the year. Um, this next kind is definitely harder because we had never done them before. It's the distance rate time questions. Please make me a DRT chart and see if you can figure this one out. I'm gonna pause and just let you Think about it carefully for a few minutes. All right, I'm going to get started on it. I may call on a couple of you to tell me what to do. All right, Mr. G, did you give me an idea? What did you call these two things here and here? All right, me and Adney. Yay. Now, did they tell you the distance? It was like far four miles or whatever. No, they did not. So they, they put a D for distance. Now the second one, you gotta be more careful. Is Adney's distance more than your distance? Less than your distance? Does it add up with your distance to some other thing? 
It's just the same. Yes, so we put a D. That's a crucial moment right there. You got to think, is it the same? Yeah, if he's going to catch you, his distance is the same as you. Sometimes they're like going towards each other and they add up to something. This one's one where they're catching each other. Whenever it's a catch each other problem, their distance is the same. All right, next, the rate. They tell you the rates. They say it's 10 miles per hour for you. And Adney, they say he's going five an hour an hour faster than you, so clearly that's 15. Then the time, they do not tell you again. So the first one, you can just put a T. The second one, you have to think about. These two boxes are where it's all about. If you can get these two boxes right, the rest will be easy. Now, the second time, does Adney travel the same amount of time as you? No, then ask yourself, does he going to travel more or less than you? Less than you, because he's started a half an hour later. So I take the time, and if I'm, he's traveling less than you, you've got to take away from the time however much the difference was, which was a half of an hour. So I'm going to put 0.5. All right. Raise your hand if you got those numbers in your boxes. Okay, any questions? Then, here's the equations you should have. D equals 10T. And the other one, D equals 15. And here's where a lot of people screw up. 15, yes, but don't just write T minus 0.5. You need parentheses. The 15 doesn't just randomly get multiplied by the first one that happens to be in front. That's dumb, because you could put either one in front. You could have said negative 5 plus T if you wanted. You've got to put the 15 to both of them, so you need a parentheses. All right. So 15 times t minus 0.5. Now, personally, I like the way where you take this 10t, you stick it right there, and you have this equation that I would put in blue. 10t equals 15 parentheses t minus 0.5. And then I just graph this side, graph that side, and see where they cross. I, would, I do want to verify right now that you know how to do that. So everybody, type those two into your equation, or into your calculator. Graph them. Make sure you can see where they cross. Then do second calculate the intersect. Enter, enter, enter. This one's a simple kind. And I'm going to walk around and verify that you know how to put that in the calculator. All right, here we go. So I have put in my two equations. D equals, or no, sorry, Y equals 10X. I did not use T. Changed it to X. And then 15, parentheses, X minus 0.5. I hit graph. I hope I see where they cross. And I do. And it doesn't have to be zoomed in super special at all. As long as I can see that they cross, that, this part will do the rest of the work. Second, calculate. And then I want the intersect, which is number 5. And then I just add, as long as I only put in two equations, it's enter, enter, enter. And there it is. Now, which is it? Is it the 1.5 or is it the 15? The 1.5, because the x is what we had in our equation, so we want to know what x is. The other way to think of it is, X is time, and we wanted to know the time. Now, raise your hand if you think the answer is 1.5. All right, you're all wrong. Gotcha. Because the answer is 1.5 for T, but is that what they asked for? No. It said, how long does it take him to catch you? It doesn't take him the 1.5. You were the T. You were the 1.5, so... It took him, take away the 0.5, it took, it is, it's kind of a trick question. Watch out for that. That's going to happen. So don't just solve for the variable and be done. Look at the answer and make sure that's what they wanted. There's, a, there's always two times if there's two people. Or there's always two distances if there's, sometimes there's two differences. No, I shouldn't say always. Sometimes there's two distances. One person went farther than the other person. And then you solve and you get the wrong person's number. Make sure you answer the question they asked you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that is correct. 1.5 hours taking away 0.5 of an hour leaves you the final answer, which should be one hour. So it took him one hour to catch you. All right, moving along. Projectile motion. There's an equation for this. We are not going to give you the equation. Therefore, you should write this down right now and memorize it. I will give, give you a reminder of what it looks like. Y equals one half, but it always starts with a half, and then the gravitational constant, which is negative 9.8 meters per second, and then I go x squared, and then the next thing is always the velocity plus x 
times x. And then the last thing is always the height. There's the only two things you can stick in, are velocity and height. They're just the last two things in the equation. Okay? If you don't know that equation, if you haven't memorized it, memorize it, because we're not giving it to you. At least that's the current plan. So now, I want you to type this equation into your calculator and put in the V that they give you and put in the height that they give you and I'm going to come around and see if you know how to second calculate the maximum of it. Remember, you're going to go to the left side of the mountain and then hit enter and the right side of it and hit enter and then you go guess which is right on top of the mountain and hit enter and it'll tell you the maximum. I'm going to come around and check you. Video here. All right, so I've typed in my equation, and it looks like this, but I can't see the top. I can't do this problem unless I can see the top. Just like intersections, you have to be able to see where they cross. So I need to see the top. I'm going to go into the window, and the height is what I want. That's controlled by Y. Go down to the Y max, and I want to move that up. So I don't know how much, so I'm going to just go on the safe side and maybe say 200. Please don't talk right now. I might hit Enter, and now I can see the top of my mountain. Okay, so now to do the actual calculation to find the maximum, I'm going to go second, calculate the maximum. All right, so, sorry I got interrupted there, I'm going to finish this up. Maximum, and then I'm going to go left boundary. I got to get the little spider thing to be, let's see, there it is, to the, just to the left of the maximum. There, it's to the left now. And then I'm going to get the little spider just to the right of the maximum. And notice that sets the right boundary. See how these boundaries have now been set? And those little marks are telling me uh, alignment's off, which is like some sort of torture. Uh, that now I can hit I can just move this over just a little bit, pausing while the green circle of death stops. All right. There. Oh. Sorry, having technical issues. There we go, 5.5 and 175. All right. Now, this is important. That's something important. And so is that. What's X in the problem? Time. It often is time independent variable. How about the y in this case? The height. So what did we just figure out? That this spot right here is happened at time 5.5 and the height at that moment was 175. So the point is if you want to know how high was it, it's the blue part. If you want to know when it happened, it's that part. Now I have one more follow-up question with that same exact equation. So see if you know how to handle this. What if I say where was it at time six seconds? There's an app for that. Where was it at time six seconds? Get it up on your calculator. Nope. Raise your hand if you knew how to do that. Raise your hand. That's almost everybody. Okay. If you didn't, watch me now. It is second, calculate, oh, can't alignment so off, uh, the, not the maximum, the value. And I want the value where x equals something, that's time, so x equals 6. Enter, and there we go, 174.25. That was second, calculate the value. All right, moving on. That's our last kind of problem, yay. So, that's what you needed to know for our next test. This is a review day. Your assignment is the review assignment. I will want to warn you that there's two little mistakes. Part of problem three is messed up. I said so in the comments underneath the key. And, part, and the answer for number 10 is messed up because at one point when they were solving their equation, they added instead of subtracted or vice versa. So it's, it, it, anyway, that's in the comments underneath the assignment. So problem three and 10, watch out for. And you may skip. Problems four and five. On today's worksheet, you can skip four and five. They're not as important as the other ones, and it felt a little long. So anyway, you may skip problems three, or sorry, four and five.